Eli Rax, El Jefe, Mr. Glass Half Full, The Revival. Welcome back to New York Revival, where it's not just sports, it's entertainment. Our man Eli Rax is not here today. He will be with us next time. I am El Jefe with my man Spiro, the big dog, Mr. Glass Half Full. How you doing, buddy? What's going on, my man? Uh, chilling, chilling. It's a, you know, a, a Monday. It's just trying to get through what we're trying to do for these people, for the people out there is we're trying to just have more reaction videos, more quick hitters for you guys. We're workshopping the name here still. We're still workshopping the name, but me and Jeff and Eli, we, we, we talked about, we want to be more in your face, more reactive. And we had some big news that dropped today, you know, right, Jeff? So we, yeah, so we to this, go live. Is, this is something Why you not? can expect uh, more of us moving forward. Uh, quicker videos, reaction to the hot topic that's in the news today, Monday. Carmelo Anthony announced that he's retiring. And this mm. is a guy, he, he was a big time Nick. So we had to jump on. We had to talk about it. This guy spent seven years with the Knicks in his prime. Mm. Um, so we have a lot of things to to talk about, right? Is he a Hall of Famer? Is this a guy that you would consider retiring his number? Like, where does he stack up against mm. the Knicks greats, right? So we're going to cover these things with you today. Um, but let's talk about a little bit about his career, right? He was born in Brooklyn. Um Moved to Baltimore when he was eight. That's how he became a Raven fan, I assume. I yeah, something. yeah, yeah. Ravens were shot. We don't acknowledge that, really. We don't right. even really acknowledge that. Right. This is that. a giant shop here. <laughs> um, but he goes to Syracuse for a year, wins the national championship, com comes into the NBA at, what, 18 or 19 years old? Dude. <laughs> it's Here, let me flash the stats for, for everybody real quick. I mean, comes in as a 19-year-old and just, just dominates – it, it it didn't it didn't one of the and arguably the best draft classes that that all time draft classes. I mean, he uh, LeBron went number one, he went number three. Uh, uh, Carmelo went number three. Um, you know, it, it, Bosch went number four, and Wade went number five. Jesus, that's that's all time right there. That's, that's all time. Like, look at this, LeBron, this. Wade, and Bosch later combined. <laughs> Dude, I, it's it's wild. It's wild. It's, 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 yeah, yeah, like. It, and they all like you know they were all part of that culture, and I think honestly, I think they are the ones that brought in this like buddy culture in the NBA, where like LeBron and 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 um, Carmelo should have been like it should have been like Magic and and um, Bird. It should have mm -hmm. been like a rivalry right there, but it wasn't because you know they, they just came through together. They were they were buddy buddies, and I mean look at the stats that he put up, man. Every year it's 20, almost twenty five plus. It ended his career and. The back back end of his career was kind of ugly, but twenty two point five points per per game is no fucking joke, man. It's no joke. Yeah, he was even one of the best scorers in the NBA. Hey, that ever. that two thousand speaking of that two thousand twelve two thousand thirteen season, he was a scoring champ, right? Led the league in in scoring that year. Um, this is some playoff stats. Averaged right averaged over twenty two points, over six rebounds. He played over twelve hundred regular season games. That's just. <laughs> so ridiculous but let's talk about what he actually did and not just for the knicks but who mm. he was you know in the grand scheme of the nba ninth leading scorer in nba history i mean yeah it, top it's crazy. top 10 all-time scorer and i feel like he doesn't get respect he doesn't get the no. same respect that everyone else on this list does yeah lebron Kareem, malone kobe jordan dirk wilt shack like you wouldn't put most people wouldn't put mellow in that category 10 time all-star six time all nba won the gold medal three times throw that in for a good measure yeah why not <laughs> um but he's he doesn't get the respect he never won a championship and he was yeah. never really close um no you know one conference final <laughs> that the was knicks, it <laughs> the knicks you know he made them fun but like just thinking back to like his time with the knicks you you tweeted it out today and you're you're spot on he brought the Knicks back to relevance. Like they got mm -hmm. Stoudemire, which was kind of the start. And that was kind of like, okay, it's okay to have stars here. Right. Because the Knicks were just <laughs> down bad for a long time. <laughs> Mello comes and all of a sudden the Knicks are exciting again. Dude. And his, I mean, he might have like my favorite jumper, like his jumper. Yeah. Smooth. As a six, it was six, seven, 240 pounds. Like to be able to, 
he, his jumper, his release, mm. he would always release at the top of his jumper. He his yeah. release to get like from the second he decides to shoot to the ball is out of his hands. He never got a shot blocked. It was like, unblockable. 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 <laughs> and in his prime, he would post you up. His mid range was. We had a word for that when he would shoot, and we invented this word. Shout out to Matt Knight if he's listening. Thwip. <laughs> because that's the sound that the net would make. And he, like, oh, when right, he pulls right. up, like, and when a guy is averaging for the Knicks anyway, like, you know, mid 20s, night yeah. after night, you get used to seeing those shots go in. And dude. when he pulled up, thwip. And it's it was automatic. just automatic, dude. He had such a nice jump shot. Like, how do you were, you're a Nets fan. How do you yeah. see him kind of maybe up from the outside looking in a little bit? Well, listen, I, I, First and foremost, I am a college basketball fan. So watching him come through Syracuse under Bayheim and just dominate, like no, not many freshmen have ever dominated before. He just came on the scene, was hyped from the beginning, and then took a, a big time program like Syracuse to the finals. And won the most important, I think he won uh, whatever the player of the finals, most important uh, player of the file, finals. Um, and he just dominated, and, and you knew he had it. He had that it factor. Um, he went to Denver. You wanted to see him take that it factor and win more, but he was surrounded by such shit. We just talked about a pre-show. Every year, he was just surrounded by not good enough players every single year. And by the time you know, he transitioned to the Knicks, Stoudemire and him were a formidable couple for like maybe a year because mm -hmm. then Stoudemire got injured, and it didn't happen with the Knicks. It didn't happen with Denver. And you know, we, we you mentioned it briefly. He's now in that Charles Barkley – Dan Marino, um, Henry L Henrik Lundqvist category, where one of the best of all time, a, a great that never got to the top. Yeah, that just yeah. never got over the top, um, and through no fault of his own, in, in, in my opinion. No, no each of those of guys own. are all time greats. They just, yeah, it just didn't happen. Just didn't work. Yeah, like, I guess like Barkley is the best comparison, right, being a, a, a guy. You know, another basketball guy too. So let me ask you these two questions because as a Knicks fan, it's too easy to answer. Yeah. Um. Is he a Hall of Famer? I think slam dunk. Slam I think dunk. first he, ballot. He was, yeah, what, he was named scorer. top seventy-five. I mean, so they did. They did the top seventy, the seventy-fifth anniversary yeah. team. He was named a top seventy-five basketball player of all time. I think he's a, he's a mortal lock to be, uh, in my opinion, first ballot. I, I don't you know. I don't care about the championships. Yes, it matters in basketball, but again, it, it was no fault of his own. So yes, lockstep. You know, first ballot. Sign okay. <laughs> Obviously, I agree. Um, yeah. <laughs> next question. Seven years with the Knicks. He wore mm. number seven. Do the Knicks retire that number? That's a tough one. It is um, a tough one. I don't. Yes, I do think he brought them back to relevancy, I, I feel like. I feel like he created almost a generation of. It, it was cool to be a, a Knicks fan again when he came back. Um, he had so many cool moments in MSG. I feel like there was there was a big generation of Nick fans that probably might have not been a Nick fan had he not that big name didn't come to New York. And I feel like he solidified himself. He brought the Knicks back into the conversation. Did he win anything big with them? No, but just bringing them to the second round. I think at one point when you do that to the Knicks in MSG, it, you, you're on another level. It's you saw, you saw it this year. You, you saw how electric the Garden oh, yeah. becomes. How psycho Knicks fans are. Pouring right, out into right. the streets. Just There's a, there that. is a craziness within the Knicks fan base mm -hmm. that doesn't show its face as much with the other teams, even though they're the same people. There's just right. something <laughs> <laughs> like Knicks fans are Giants and Jets fans, but there's just something crazier I feel about like the Knicks fans. It's a combo of like there's some Jet fans in there, there's some Ranger fans, there's some Nick fans, I mean, a Yankee fan. It's like the and it's the craziest combination of all of them, <laughs> and it just propels. MSG to be this this is monster and man if they could ever just if they landed a peak Carmelo like if they drafted a Carmelo they, they need that guy they need the, the guy from the draft that. they just I can't know. draft their own guy we um, gotta get there well oh. speaking of a guy the Knicks drafted Patrick Ewing mm. one of the all time mm. Knicks greats now yeah. if you're asking me which you're not I'm asking myself I, I'm gonna where, ask you that. okay where does he stack up against the all-time Knicks, I have yeah. him, like, right after the elite names. Yes. And, you know, a lot of these names, 
are from like the 1970, 1973 teams, Walt Frazier, Willis Reed, Earl Monroe. Those are legendary basketball names, not just Knicks, but legendary names. Um, Bernard it's King. It's like almost you have to do a modern era, though. You have to do a modern era list. I too. know. Like, I know. It's Ewing and, Mel- and, and kind of mellow, right? That's it. Those are the top two. That's it. Like, you, it's, you can't really put Alan Houston, who was like a good scorer, but like. Starks, maybe? Starks. <laughs> Same great, team, though, great you know? Nick, yeah. but like the stats are not there. This, no. this, you know, so like no. you, I think it's Ewing after those guys, mm-hmm. and then Mello. Like I put He's him right. I, I put him right outside that range. You're right. And the Knicks drafted Patrick Ewing at least. Like, when are the Knicks? This is a separate conversation. When are the yep. Knicks going to get their own homebred guy? Uh, not that they ever stay in one place for long because if they have well, a bad day, is... they request a trade and they're gone. So. <laughs> Oh man, but like, it's just it, it's it, it's the end of an era today. Like, uh, you know, let's, let's call it space Spade. We kind of felt like he was retired for a couple of years now, even though he, he you know he hasn't been playing in a while. Like I said, I think his you know his last season was a couple of years ago. But um, you know, he officially marked his retirement. But like you, I don't know. Me and you are kind of the same age. We I remember when him and Melo were coming up, were coming up the buzz around them, them h- hanging out at the Nike camps, you know, and do, and playing in the All Star games. Um, and it just, those two, like they, they brought in the ne- next generation of basketball player. I feel like, yeah. And Chris, you know, Chris it, Ball, yeah, um, right. Those guys. Like I said, Think- Bosch, Wade, yeah. that whole group, that whole group of them. It's incredible. Um, so, like, I, yeah. I really wish like he definitely didn't get, you know, the, the right send off to his career. He, he no. fizzled out instead of going out on his own terms. Like, you know, Dwayne Wade had his final game nice. and, yeah. and he had those guys we're talking about. We're all sitting front row to watch his final game, mm-hmm. cheering him on. Melo didn't have that. And that sucks. Um, was, I'm, yeah. glad that, I'm glad that he made an appearance this year at one of the playoff games and he got a huge ovation. And I'm sure mm-hmm. in his mind, he probably knew he was retiring at this point, but he got mm-hmm. a huge ovation from the garden, which he deserves. Um, I almost wish he could have had a send off this year, right? You, I got, know. you got Derek Rose and Fournier collecting dust on the bench, you're telling me they couldn't use 12, right. 12 to 15 and, minutes of mellow here and there? Right. <laughs> like, you know, offense. He, he scored 13 points his last season with the Lakers. Like, I, I don't know why you couldn't just 13 points a game or 13 Yeah, 13 points. Sorry, sorry. 13 <laughs> points a game. <laughs> right. No, like, he Nick's, Nick's going to use some, he was you know, Nick's had a shooter. decent bench. Give Mello that seventh guy. Eighth guy, twelve to fifteen minutes, get some instant Wonder offense. Nice. If he gets hot at the garden, they, they erupt. Yeah, you know, like yeah. that's a guy that should have got a last hurrah with the. And next. it would have been a good team to go off on, like you know, what I'm saying, mm-hmm. like they make it to the playoffs. You know, he could have been along for the ride, not the one carrying him this time. And oh, man, it would have been a feel good story. Um, but again, though, fantastic career. Um, first ballot Hall of Famer, in my opinion. One of the best to ever do a, a small forward, it, it, you know, because he could defend. He also could defend. He could rebound. He was so big. He did so many things for the team. It could bring the ball up. Could shoot the three. I mean, he was he was, he was a fun to watch. Player, Such bro. a smooth jumper, man. Such yeah. a fun jumper uh, to watch. Like Curry's Curry has kind of like not gone off the rails, but like the chucking yeah. of threes has <laughs> it's like changed. Like, like Curry, you know, in those like three or four years in a row where they were just so not like Curry's jump shot was up oh. there. I mean, it still is. Don't get me wrong. Curry's the best it shooter. Is. But like when you look at like just watching the actual jump shot, Mello had something that no one else did. There's just, Agreed. it was poetry. It was just something, something about it. That was awesome. I put um, him and Durant on that same kind of level in that their jump shot is so smooth and it's unblockable because they're so tall, so long and they're, they're bigger than, 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 the most small forwards, so they, they and guards can't touch them, and and they're quicker than any power forwards and centers. So they're just mismatches all over the yeah. court, man. Watch yeah, like Durant. Guys. Durant uses his height, like at six eleven, I think, like to Dude. be able to shoot. And, and his he wingspan, shoots, and he like shoots, and he shoots like feet. up here too. Yeah, like you're, you're not blocking that. <laughs> right, uh, but right. Melo wasn't afraid to bang under the boards either. He used yes. to wear like rib cage protectors because he's thrown his weight around two hundred forty pounds. He was not afraid. To get nasty um, yeah. under the rim, and and he was such a good offensive threat. Um, I'm not sure if they retire his number. You know, I was just about to ask you. Do you think they do? I think he, Hall of Famer. For you? I think Hall of Fame 100. 
But the guy yeah. played for six teams. When you think of his, like he came out on fire with Denver. He was yeah. so fun. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the Knicks retire him just because there's no other Nick. <laughs> it's like it's like they've done it. I'm looking at the names, and it's, it's Patrick Ewing, and before Ewing, that, it was is Ewing Bradley. the last one. Is Ewing it, the last? It was one? the most recent one. Yes, by far. So then it was Bill Bradley, uh, uh, Willis Reed, you know, McGuire, Earl yeah, Monroe, all Frazier, the guys we talked about. So seventies guys. Then if I'm like a marketing guy. At, the garden, I'd be like, we got to do it. The rafters are, you, you know, have we haven't to, had right? any action up there. Like, this is the, the most retirable it's number. dusty up there. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man. I'm with you, dude. It's... But a great career. I wish he got one more run with the Knicks, kind of yeah. like a farewell tour. That would have been nice. But I do like okay. Jalen Brunson, who has totally embraced, like, the Knicks mm. that have come before him. You saw John Starks at the games. Yes. Um, yes. And Jalen Brunson seems to be in contact with them a lot. And he seems to be close to them. It's he great. tweeted out today, like legendary career. He he was, you know, supporting Mello, and you know, Mello was at those games talking to him too. So um he gets it. Brunson gets it. He gets what it's like to be a Nick. He gets what it's like to be a New Yorker. Um, the, the Knicks are in good hands, man. They're in really good hands with Brunson. Now get him some damn help uh before we waste his career, right? Like like so many others before it, like Mello, like Ewing, like all these guys. You can't have one man shows. Put some guys around him. So we could take this thing to the next level here. Yeah, we're on our way. I meant I meant next, but <laughs> just, I, I, I was so cross close. Over. I was just so crossover. I know, I know. I listen. I'm I am right now. I'm 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 by fan anyway. I'm by I'm by New York. You're by fan. You <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So for basketball, that is only for basketball. <laughs> Fair. Well, thanks for hanging um, out with the revival. That was fun. We're gonna do fun. Uh, more of these as, as big news drops. But congrats to Mello, awesome career. I've talked myself into retiring his number because the Knicks need to. I think that that cements him as a Nick instead of the other five teams he played yeah. for. Just a seven? Is this a seven? Yeah, it is for Something me. Like that. Yes. <laughs> All right, good, good. Uh, I mean, there's a lot, to, lot to think about right there. There's a lot. <laughs> Uh, but thanks for hanging out. Like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Until next time, I am El Jefe. That is Spiro on behalf of Eli Rax, New York Revival, where it's not just sports. What is it, Spiro? It's entertainment. That's right. Till next time. Eli Rax, El Jefe, Mr. Glass Half Full, the Revival.